The microbiome is the constellation of microscopic organisms that call the human body home. Trillions of microorganisms or microbes live all over our bodies, on our skin, and inside us. These bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other microbes make up our microbiota. And the vast majority of them, about 95%, live in the gastrointestinal tract. The human body harbors more microscopic organisms than human cells. In fact, 10 times more. Not only that, but our genes are outnumbered 100 to 1 by the microbial genes in and on our bodies. So when it comes right down to it, you might say that we are more microbe than human. This combination of gut microbes, their genes, the environment they live in, and the materials they produce is called the human microbiome, and its clinical implications are becoming increasingly clear to physicians. The balance of good bacteria in the gut keep the bad bacteria in check in a kind of harmonious bio-world that helps maintain our health and well-being. Dutch scientist Antony van Leeuwenhoek was the first to discover this aspect of human biology in the late 17th century. He observed bacteria scrapings from his mouth that suggested humans have long had a symbiotic relationship with microbes. But it wasn't until recently that we've begun to study how these microbes are tied to health. Today, that research is still in its infancy, but scientists are gradually discovering more about the human microbiome. Microbes begin to colonize our bodies at birth, and that natural process continues until the day we die. Even the way we're born is a factor. Babies born naturally are first exposed to vaginal microbiota. Infants delivered by cesarean section are initially colonized by microbes found on the surface of the skin and in hospital settings. Similarly, breastfed babies have a different microbiota profile than formula-fed babies. The microbiome evolves quickly after birth, reaching its maximum diversity at adolescence. As adults, changes to our microbiota tend to be minor. And as we grow older, our microbiome ages too, and the number of microbe species decreases, leaving us prone to possible disease. The specific balance of microbial diversity within specific anatomical locations differs among people because of variations in hygiene, social behaviors, and genetics. The gut microbiota may also differ at different points in time at the same anatomical area within the same person because of environmental changes. And not surprisingly perhaps, diet plays a major role in defining the composition of the gut microbiota. Since most microbes are in the colon, what we eat feeds our microbiota. So this is a kind of good news, bad news story. The good news is that healthy microbiota thrive on fiber-rich complex carbohydrates. These healthy carbs cannot be broken down in the small intestine, so they make their way into the colon where bacteria breaks them down through fermentation. That enables us to use the nutrients in complex carbs that we couldn't otherwise. What's more, the microbiota provides essential vitamins that we can't make ourselves, such as B vitamins. And perhaps most importantly, all the microbiota help our immune system. Now the bad news. A poor diet starves the healthy microbes in our gut of the nutrients they need, and, in turn, may leave us vulnerable to diseases the microbiota would otherwise help our immune systems to fight off. An imbalance of microorganisms with the intestines or gut dysbiosis has been implicated in many gastrointestinal illnesses, like C. difficile infection, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, and fatty liver disease. It has also been linked to systemic conditions such as asthma and allergies, autoimmune disorders, including rheumatoid arthritis, obesity, and metabolic disorders, such as diabetes and neuropsychiatric conditions like depression, anxiety, and stress. Critical links have also been found between the microbiome and our immune systems and even our ability to fight cancer. So, can the microbiome be used to treat or even prevent disease? The National Institutes of Health's Human Microbiome Project and countless independent researchers are working to determine whether microbiota restorative therapies might hold the key to this. Often referred to as the biotics, they attempt to modulate the gut microbiome. They include prebiotics, which are compounds that foster growth or activity of beneficial microorganisms. Probiotics, which are live microorganisms that when consumed are thought to improve or restore the gut microbiota. 
and symbiotics, which are combinations of prebiotics and probiotics designed to work synergistically. Promising lines of research have found adding probiotics and prebiotics in supplement form or in foods help to feed the microbiome what it needs. But the use of them alone as a treatment has not been proven to be curative. Fecal microbiota transplantation, or FMT, is used to change the recipient's gut microbial composition to confer a health benefit and is effective in treating C. difficile infection. FMT is also being investigated for use in other conditions. Advanced probiotics might even restore normal colonic diversity without the need for FMT. As this and more clinical research emerges, it seems that it's what's inside that counts. And who knows, one day, the prevention and treatment of chronic conditions may simply revolve around boosting the power of the human microbiome.